just make them like Dragon Ball Z anime style where they're like acute triangles like this. <laughs> or like Starfire from Teen Titans. Little... Hers are like dots, right? Yeah. Yeah, that works too. Or, or what else could you do it as? You just just like super straight, straight and flat, flat like, like Koreans. Koreans. Is that how theirs are? Yeah. Big and flat. It doesn't work for me then, though. I mean, way to just, just stereotype and categorize them that they all have the same eyebrows. You know, that's... That's... Uh, if I look up... I'm trying to break stereotypes here, Taylor. Okay, well... I don't know how to say that. <laughs> That's why they consider it Korean makeup. Right. Is that offensive, calling it Korean makeup, but then really, like... But it's nice. Yeah, so if it's a good thing, then it's not offensive, but then if it's a bad thing, then it's offensive. That's a good, that's a good point. Is it? Is it offensive if it's only... Right. Is it only offensive if it's bad? Right. Does a stereotype need to be bad, necessarily? Exactly. Wait, by like, the way. He's just being smart. Sorry, real quick. Ray, are you the one in um, my photography class? I never could figure that out. So. Waiting. Oh, okay. Then, hey, glad you've been coming often and hopefully you're learning a little bit of Korean. Cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, in photography class, we're like kind of all in on stereotypes and uh, trying to... In a photography class? Photography class, yeah. Talking about stereotypes in a photography class? Yeah, well, because if you think about it, right, like... Photos have the power of like conveying messages, right? So why not wow. use that that power to make it meaningful? So that's the logic behind it. And hopefully it's going well and hopefully it will go well. But yeah. So yeah. Don't don't be a don't be a stereotyper. I won't be a stereotyper. I, I take back what I said. No, but then I mean, if it was a compliment, then it's okay, right? I don't, right? Isn't it? Like, is it an offense if I say that all Asians are, are smart? I think so. I think that's offensive. Or not necessarily offensive, but I think it's um, not necessarily okay. Mm. I don't know. What do you think? Like, like, if your parents, when you were growing up, if your parents were like, you're supposed to be smart, you're Asian. Would you take offense to that? Because you don't fit the stereotypical Asian? I guess so. Or like if they were to say something like, oh, Asians are supposed to be dirty, but you're not dirty. That's still taking offense, oh. uh, I would take offense to it. Right. That would be in the other way though, right? That's like flipped because it's like the stereotype is negative. So it's it's almost like a backhanded compliment, right? Like, exactly. oh, I thought Asians were ugly, but you're not ugly. It's like, oh, flattering. Thank you. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. That could... I feel like we could talk about this for hours. But we got something else to talk about. And that is, here tonight I have with me the 69 Cherry Blossom Princess, Taylor! Oh, God! Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, so the one person on the live stream right now, I think. Um, congratulate Taylor on... Which way? This way. Taylor is the 69th Cherry Blossom Princess. <laughs> yeah? How does it feel being royalty now? Oh God, not even royalty. It, I, I still feel like I'm, I'm, it didn't even happen. It just felt like a rehearsal. How many 
how many contestants were there? There were 11 total. 11 and so 11 and total four five princess made five made it, right? So mm -hmm. you are above average. <laughs> Not saying that those that didn't get it are below average by no means. I'm sh uh, I'm positive that everyone was more than oh, superb, you know that, and everyone did a great job. I'm sure, um, but you got you know you got the title, so congratulations. Thank you. It was so much fun, and I really enjoyed that night. It like I don't know if. You saw, but I, when they were crowning me, they were, they were playing BTS, Dynamite, and it wasn't, I, yeah. it wasn't even planned. It just wow. had this, like, such a funny coincidence that they would play Dynamite to me. Wow. I was, I didn't even realize they were playing it until, until they started putting the crown on my, or, or when I was sitting down, they were taking out the things out of my hair to be able to put the crown on. Uh -huh. I was like, Oh my god, they're playing BTS! Like, wow, that like, is... Laboratory song, whatever, but like, I got BTS and that made my night. So like, yeah, no, I, I saw like some of your story uh, reposts um, of that and like, yeah, so I saw that too. And so then th that was just completely coincidence, like other people had different songs and stuff? Yeah, so some people had like, Oh, bang, bang into the room. Or like they had like oh, just a lot of celebratory songs that are like din, 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 like the, um, uh, what's his name? Song? Yeah, like from, uh, what's that guy that, that sings for um, Panic at the Disco? Oh, wait, is High Hopes Fall Out Boy or Panic at the Disco? Panic at the Disco. I'm pretty sure. Pete? No, that's Fall Out Boy, right? Yeah, that Pete is Fall Out Boy, but um That's all I know. Whatever his name is. Okay. He writes sins, not tragedies. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. But so Okay, I, I I get the gist of it. So just upbeat songs and stuff. And just so happen you get the one K pop song. You know of what that means, I... right? Like, you're that? probably going to marry Jimin or... <gasps> Jin! Jin, Jin, I don't know. Whoever. Like, you honestly. It... You heard it here. Dean is predicting the future. I will marry Jin. I said probably. I will marry Jin. Okay, well. Jin, Jimin. Like, be honest. If either one of the members was like, Hey Taylor, you're a you're a princess. Um, let's get married. You would totally get married, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah. On the spot. Not even. I don't even. On the spot. On the spot. Marry me now. Because you know, like getting to know the person isn't really that important, you know. No. no. Not when it comes to them. They're. I know that they're perfect. Is that idolizing? Is is that wrong too? I just You're... love someone so much that I think that they can do no wrong. Foolish. Foolish, foolish, <laughs> foolish. <laughs> He's probably like dumb. <laughs> but but I'm not gonna lie, I, I'm the same way. If if Jimin proposed to me, I'd probably you know be like, uh Whoa, if you really? can introduce me to uh, one of the girl K-pop idols, then... Oh, no. IU came up to you now. Oh my gosh. IU came up to me and proposed, it would be... It wouldn't be IU anymore, it would be us. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But I mean, I know IU is a good person, so there's that. Well, I know Jin is a good person. All right. Well, then. You heard it here first. It's going to work. I will marry Ayu and Taylor will maybe marry Jin. No. no. Will. 
Well, you're gonna marry Will. No, Will will marry Jin. You said maybe. Will will marry Jin. I will marry Jin. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyways, so, um, today, I figured, you know, celebrate the huge accomplishment. Like, let's talk about, um, this whole process, basically. So, how this started, let's go all the way back to when you first decided. What made you decide, let's let's go and run for the Cherry Blossom pageant, which is probably one of the most, like, recognized beauty pageant. Or I don't, I don't want to say beauty pageant, but one of the most highly oh, recognized right. pageants, right, in uh, Hawaii. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, and I know I'm not I'm, I'm not supposed to say too much because, okay. well, well, I'm not supposed to say too like I'm technically not supposed to say anything unless we get permission. But that's well, when we well, I mean, but, just keep it in legal limits then. Okay. Yeah, well, I joined because I always followed the Cherry Blossom Festival for years, and I always noticed that they do participate in. Um, cultural classes such as things like calligraphy or um, Okinawan culture or karate, kendo, all those things. So I wanted to participate to be able to do those classes and I didn't know that these classes were free because these are um, have been sponsored and been donated uh, from all the sponsors that contribute to the Cherry Blossom Festival. So that was such a huge plus and also I, the age limit, the age uh, range that you can do it is from 18 to 28. So 28, wow. Six, it was coming up to my year and you need to be under 28 to even apply. Wow. I need to, I, I wanted, I, it was either this year or next year. And I decided I'm going to do it this year because this is where I'm starting off my career. Mm-hmm. I'm not so involved in classes, so I can, I have time to put into it now. Because later on, when I start to become a full-time professor, I will not be able to do and participate in all these different activities. So I just took this opportunity to participate in the festival. And it was honestly the best experience of my life. So um, I I didn't know that 28 was the cutoff age. That is pretty young. But okay, well, regardless of that, so... Uh, yeah, those of you that also don't know, so this is your first year... No, you were teaching last year too, right, as a professor? So, I started teaching as a professor in the fall of 2020, and that was when I started the Cherry Blossom Festival. Oh, it was all the way back then? Yep. I, well, I mean, well, if you can say that. I, I don't know. Oh, no, I was just looking at the date. I was like, oh, okay. the date... April 2021. So yeah, ever since it started, I applied in, I believe, July of 2020. And then they gave me the call that I got, I I could interview for a spot as a contestant in, I think, June, July, August. And then they let me know in September that I made it as a contestant. Wow. Yeah. And it's funny that you said the the age of 28 is really old. It's really, um, you said it's really I didn't say old. You said it's really young, but actually I just learned um, that that was actually pushed, extended because before the, I'm not exactly sure what age uh, requirement it was before, but it was a lot less. Wow. So being that, okay, wait, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I had a, I had a brain fart because, um, right, like, now with covid it's like every year you don't know which year like what happened in what year so i was thinking fall 2020 as in like pre-covid but this was actually during covid during covid yeah like eight months ago ish then right yeah august yeah okay so but then before that you were that was your because I, I remember we kind of knew each other and then you were still already doing lectures, right? Or no? 
Yes. Yeah, so um, I was a TA at UH oh. during those, all those years before. So I was teaching genetics lab and molecular biology lab at UH Manoa. Oh. And I went straight into lecturing in the fall. I see. And then you're like, let's do this cherry blossom thing too. Oh, I was like, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm only young once. So come on. My mom was like, why are you doing it now? There's a pandemic. You, you don't know if you can go anywhere. But I was like, this is the only time that I can do it. So I'm going to do it now. Right. And it's like, I don't know the way that I see it. And I totally understand where your mom is coming from. And I think that's like, I think my first thought would be the same way, right? Like, because the whole thing is, and I don't know if you can talk about this, but what I know, uh, because my cousin ran before and then she was like the Miss Congeniality? Popularity, popularity. I think. The one who sells the most, right? Or whatever. Yeah, popular. Popularity. So they get to go to Japan, right? But then mm -hmm. um, it's only the Queen and Miss Popularity get paid for or something like that? Yes, that... exactly. Okay. But so, but still, it's a amazing experience, right? Getting to go to Japan. And uh -huh. I can see that that's kind of on the fence, right? With whole COVID and stuff. But I, I'm sure, I don't know, whether you get to go to Japan or not, regardless of that, would, uh, and uh, I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm going to just okay. assume that you would still say this whole journey was worth it. Yes, whether or not I go to Japan or not, it's it was so worth it because I came in just wanting to do the cultural classes and everything that I came out of it, whether it be the professional development or gaining the lifelong friendships with the other contestants or just this whole experience and like even getting all the free things through the sponsor sponsorships and being able to participate in this cultural festival, everything was just a plus and it was just gravy. and. Anything that we get out of this, like even as a court member, and I got a title, so everything that I've gotten out of this has just been a blessing. Cool. No matter can, what. Can you maybe talk a little bit? You mentioned like the professional development and stuff. Can you maybe <laughs> share one insight while it's still fresh, right? And I'm sure like it, learning it is fresh, but then when you actually get to practice it in real life, I'm sure that's when you're really gonna um, kind of, what is the word, like really grasp the whole, all of that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you for that feedback. I'll let me, um, give me one second. Is it, here, let me plug in my microphone and maybe that will. Uh, no, it's coming from my end. Hello? Can you hear me? Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, maybe yeah, so can you maybe talk a little bit about the process and then because we have, you know, some of my students on here. Oh, no sound when Taylor is talking. Hold on. Oh, do I? Take out my microphone. Maybe that was it. No, no, no it's, it's all on my end. Like the problem is mine. Try to talk. Hello. Okay, I think it's working now. We have our tech support in the chat. Thank you. That's uh, Wade from Team Possible. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, okay, that's yeah, good. So, All right. So can you maybe talk about first, I guess, the process? Or like maybe overall, like if you can talk about it, yeah. What that was like going through like those what classes. Happened. What happened? And then also like maybe your biggest like thing that you want to pass on to the viewers as far as like this one thing you should do if you want to be professional. Mm. Okay. So 
the whole process of going through the Cherry Blossom Festival, from beginning, we get interviewed to be a contestant, then we're accepted as a contestant. And of course, throughout that process, because it's such an established festival and there's, it's a really big thing, there's a lot of logistics that you have to go through with signing a whole contract and making sure that you abide by all the rules. And it's a really binding thing, uh, of course, because Japanese are very conservative. So there's a lot of things that we can and cannot do. More so not than can. Taibo. And uh, when you're going through... Huh? Are you sure you can be talking about this? I don't want to like incriminate you or anything in any way. Oh, yeah. No, no. Okay. okay I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's... Okay. okay, but uh, with this, with the classes that are going on, there's, um, I, I experienced it all virtually, of course, due to COVID. And throughout the process, when we have a class, we always log on like 10 minutes earlier from the class. We always have to dress in um, business casual clothes and we present ourselves in the best way to all of all our instructors that are instructing the class. So for example, we had like a manju making class and during the process we had to go um, get the ingredients from our coordinator. She gave us ingredients and we take the class online through Zoom. And that's uh, an example of like a cooking class that we did. And for like professional development, we would have people that have been past Queens or people that are have got their degrees in communication, where they uh, teach us about how to speak, how to sit, how to stand, how to walk. And the, these are what I grew from the most. Like, although I grew a lot culturally and learned a lot about the Japanese culture, I feel like I took so much away from the professional development. And that is what I feel like stands out from other pageants. Although this isn't a pageant, it's more of a cultural festival. I just feel like with this, um, the professional development, for example, I would have an instructor that would do impromptu questions with me and ask me about myself, like, tell me about yourself, or why did you join the Cherry Blossom Festival? And the biggest thing that I learned from professional development was when you speak and you answer questions, you kind of have to tell a story, you have to catch the attention, and you have to tell a little bit about yourself. So of course, if someone if someone asks why did you join the cherry blossom festival and i say oh because i wanted to that doesn't tell me tell anything about me it doesn't tell anything about what i do or um it kind of just answers the question but when you answer a question you have to tell a little bit and that gets the interviewer to know about you so it really helps with like professional development in that it prepares you for life uh, big life things like interviews that everyone has to go through and throughout that time every week there are two or uh, one to two classes and sometimes meetups to um, do volunteer work throughout our entire journey in the cherry blossom festival and this happens every week ever since the start of our journey in september all the way up until now which is april every week you're doing some kind of volunteer not not volunteer, but it's every week there's two, uh, like one to three classes every other day. Or sometimes we have volunteer work on the weekends or um, practices or rehearsals. It depends so on the week. It was like a full on class, like like a college course kind of thing. Oh, yeah, like an hour long, hour wow. to two hours every day. So outside of your work and everything, it, it they do make, um, fil uh, make it so that you can attend it outside of class. I mean, I mean, you can, you're able to attend it because they ha they know that everyone has jobs and everything. Mm -hmm. So usually everything is during the nighttime or on the weekends, but um, there is a big commitment that you have to put into for the Cherry Blossom Festival. It takes a lot of time out of your schedule. I can imagine. Um, so it definitely sounds like a lot of uh what is the word like it's it sounds like it was a lot of teaching you all like that it's bigger than just yourself like you you really gotta like put in the extra obviously right it's like it's sort of a competition in a way 
Did mm. did it feel like that at any point? Like that's a that's a really good question. Because honestly, at the beginning, my uh, my mom was drilling into my head. It's a competition. You're competing with these girls. You can't be friends with them. But what I learned throughout this whole process that this is the whole idea of this cherry blossom festival is to perpetuate the Japanese culture and to help you grow professionally and to gain lifelong friendships. And I feel that that really was shown, especially in our group of girls, where we got so close. And I, I at, at some point, I just didn't even see it as a competition anymore. I saw it as we're growing together. And that's, I think, what the mission of the Japanese, uh, this whole cultural festival is, is to make you grow as a person and just, like I said, to perpetuate the Japanese culture. And it's not, the competition is just a side thing. Mm -hmm. It's just, the competition is just, the only part of the competition is to pick out the best representatives of the Japanese community. Mm. Who are under 28 years old. <laughs> We're under 28 years old. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so, just just if any of you were curious for the criteria to apply, uh, my understanding is you have to be at least half Japanese? Mm -hmm. At least 50% Japanese ancestry. Uh -huh. um, you have to be 18 to 28 years old. Those are the two main criteria. Okay. And, then... and of course, you have to have... Um, a, be a person of good character. <laughs> Hope, not, you hopefully, have to have yes. not been married, not have been pregnant, been born a woman. Been born a woman? Been born a female. You cannot be... What? You have to have been born a you, woman. Cause... You have to have been born a... Oh, okay, I thought you said that's one of the things you can't be. I was like... Oh, no, 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 you have to be. You have to be. Okay. So, okay. yeah, the, that's a that's a that's the thing they haven't changed is that you it, mm. transgender is not a consideration you have to be mm. I see I see or okay. enough feet okay um so like you mentioned you know initially you joined because you wanted to learn you wanted to really experience the cultural things right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um. Now, with every culture, okay, this is real quick, like, disclaimer. With every culture and every group of people, I think everything has its pros as well as its cons. Mm -hmm. Now, I, for the sake, like, for the sake of today, we're not going to go into any of the cons. That's up for your own interpretation. I can talk about maybe some cons about Japanese culture. <laughs> I'm not a... I'm not a representative of a, you know, <laughs> well, I'm full community. Japanese, by the way, right? So, um, just putting that out there. But, um, yeah, so I, there are also a lot of really great things from Japanese culture, I feel. Uh, without, um, what is the word? In your own personal opinion, mm -hmm. what do you, first of all, I guess, do you think you really grew a lot culturally? And if so, maybe like three takeaways that you're like, not necessarily that like, oh, Japan does this better than so-and-so country, but like mm -hmm. you, you saw that TikTok where it's like things in Japan that just make sense. So, yeah. like, so like things in Japan that just make sense. Makes <laughs> I guess that's the same <laughs> thing. Uh, things in Japanese culture that just make sense. Mm. <laughs> okay so i guess for three things the first thing would be the the humbleness of the japanese people so japanese always do things to the best of their ability no matter what and that was seen throughout the just the character of the instructors and how much pride they take in their work so, for example, with the calligraphy, she taught um, she taught us everything about why you do the strokes a certain way and how much pressure you have to put in and how um, with calligraphy, it's a one time thing. You kind of don't go back and what your work is, your work and you take so much and you take pride in it because it's what you made and it was your best. And the that that 
humbleness of um, that I've seen through the instructors where they, although we say that, oh my God, it's magnificent. It's so amazing. Your calligraphy is beautiful or your um, Ikebana, which is flower arrangement is so pretty. Of course they would, they would say, oh, thank you. Thank you. But it's, it's nothing much. Of course, like that is a big thing in just Asian culture in general. Mm -hmm. But I noticed a lot of Japanese, um, like when they were dressing us in the kimonos on the festival ball day, I kept complimenting them on how beautiful their kimono was and how well they put it on me. And they were like, oh no, it's fine. It's fine. I, it's, 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 it's like, it's nothing. And they would, they would, it's, they're just so humble about everything that they do. So that's like one thing. Uh, another thing that I really admire about the Japanese culture is that their the the idea of thoughtfulness. So, for example, all the girls and just all the these this whole festival is it's just giving. It's made up of volunteers. They're not getting paid to do this. Mm -hmm. None of them are getting paid to do anything that they're doing. They're volunteering to give to these contestants the best experience of their life and all the girls kind of learn from it and like through the process of omiya gay mm -hmm. that's like to me the first thing that comes to mind when i think of japanese being thoughtful because omiya gay is a gift that you give to someone um when, usually when you go to another place you bring something right. back for them because you're just thinking of someone else you don't have to do it but you're thinking of someone else so at the end of the whole thing all the girls gave like all these gifts like there's so many different gifts like look at this it's so thoughtful it's a bouquet wow. with with like uh, well these are fake cherry blossom but it's something that she put together and it says like 69th uh cbf taylor wow. from Kristen, and she gave like a little tag and this isn't even all shout of out everything to Kristen. yeah shout out to Kristen. i love you yeah yeah the, well, I guess that's not three things, but those are the two main things that I wanted to talk about. Japanese cool. culture is just, I, I didn't know too much about it before going into it because I'm half Japanese, half Chinese. So I knew a lot about my Chinese culture because my mom is first generation immigrant, but oh. my dad's fourth generation Japanese. So mm -hmm. of course, over time you kind of lose it. And that's why I wanted to do this festival. And I learned all of that and just, everything positive about the Japanese culture. Of course, there's like the wars and everything, but yeah, that, that happened. <laughs> That's another day. That's another day. <laughs> That's another day. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, go go read a history book. If you wanna... uh, okay. Yeah, no, that's really cool. And um, again, being that I'm ethnically cool. Japanese, um, but just like your dad, right? I'm like fifth generation Japanese or something. Yeah, yeah, same. So like like you mentioned, you know, culture, like, yeah, okay, I eat rice with my meals and I know how to use hashi. Hashi is chopsticks. Um, oh, real quick, by the way, if omiyage is um, like, oh, yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, like when you get gifts for other people, um, mm -hmm. usually when you go somewhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's definitely like, I'd say maybe Japanese is one of the most, like Japanese Hawaii locals are probably the biggest population that don't really know their true culture. Mm -hmm. Like that's personal opinion, but that's how I feel. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, we're so far removed from that. And then also there was all like with, Pearl Harbor and you know World War II and in internment camps where a lot of the Japanese culture was suppressed uh so you know like my grandparents can sort of kind of speak Japanese like they know words here and there it's so funny when my friend from Japan came over and like um my grandpa met her all of a sudden he's like fluent in Japanese oh. it sounded like he was like gonna have a like a stroke trying to speak Japanese like <laughs> it, oh, oh my god, god. It's, like so like you know we all kind of have bits and pieces of our culture I think but you know like like you mentioned that it's nothing compared to maybe another culture like I had no idea your mom was first generation though that mm -hmm. that's crazy 
Yeah, and she then, is. But her too, she's pretty like localized already, yeah, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's, she's when I like talked to her, I I thought like, oh, she's just like local, you know, local Asian Chinese mom. woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But okay, cool. Um so that was two things you your big takeaways. Um yeah. you and wanna respect. respect, yeah, with a K or Respect, yeah. Respect, yeah. Um, do you want to share your other gifts that they got you or, or no? Well, there is, this one was one of the ones that stood out to me a lot, but there, there is so many, of course they gave so many different treats. Like a lot of these girls are so crafty. That's what I realized. Like, I don't even know, like one girl, she really loves Corgi. So she gave this Corgi boba mask. Oh, so that's adorable. Because, of course, we're Asians. We all love boba. We all get whoa, whoa, whoa. boba all whoa. The time. Again, with the stereotypes. Okay, we're an Asian. Well, Asians made boba, so we like to support our Asian community. Oh, okay, okay. Asians are very supportive of their communities. That's yes. Right. And, they gave, and they gave things like material for, like, masks and stuff. And can use this material to make OBs. And, oh, my OB gosh. Is oh. Great. Some girls gave like thoughtful picture Huge. gifts like this. It's on a it's on a on a canvas. Wow. And that's all and you? I, yeah, so this is me. Oh, this is actually from our um one of our advisors. And this is my family. This was our theme for the year. Every year Cherry Blossom has a theme. So our year our theme this year was Keeble, which is hope. Oh. And this is me at one of our public appearances in our public appearance dress and all the girls. Oh, it was just so thoughtful. They make me cry because they're so thoughtful. That is pretty awesome. Yeah, there's so much, so much more. It's downstairs too, but yeah, there. And ah, I mean, just make me cry. Just from looking at that, like, yeah, I definitely get like the thoughtfulness that you're mentioning, you know, and like trying your best. Like, I'm not to like put anyone down if they did buy you something materialistic, but like, it seems like the gifts are much more like thought out and it yeah meaning well they're meaningful because it required their effort yeah into making that yeah is that i don't know that's my quick insight on that exactly yeah it's 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 not just money that goes into it it's the time and thinking of you and like some a girl made uh one of the girls made this shadow box that had like pictures of our favorite things and wow. uh, have little drawings of our favorite things and oh my goodness how could i forget this my friend made this this picture book for each individual oh girl and like she wow. photoshopped her heads onto a cherry blossom tree wow that is right cool. cool and like she made this whole book full of pictures of us during our cherry blossom thing so this was Whoa. during our tea ceremony um some during our kimono class like it's amazing this was during our first bonding which was on the hike to makapu'u oh and why are you at- all wearing is that cow shirts we're supposed to be dalmatians oh i thought you were cows oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is I cried getting this gift because it was so cute. And oh my gosh, this was a thing. That, okay, so this is not a thing that all, I don't know if all contestants do, but I was the first contestant to celebrate really, uh, to really celebrate my birthday. So this is when oh. we we're all still getting to know each other. And they surprised uh-huh. me and made me a brownie, uh, like a brownie cake during wow. one of our first meetups in person. And How, how are you holding it like that? that? Oh. Huh? How are you holding it like that? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't even remember how it didn't fall out. But yeah, we had like bondings. Wow. Like this was when we went to So Me So Me. We took off our mask temporarily, okay? It wasn't. No worries. Not, I'm not here to judge. And then we like, we bonded outside of Cherry Blossom where we like did, we went to the driving range and golf. We went to dinner together at, uh, oh. what's it called? Um, uh, what's that place in Kakako? Salt. Oh. 
And then this is the girl who made it. This is Motomi. She's another princess. Oh, that is and super duper awesome. Awesome sisters for life. B -S Single. Oh, so. Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So cool. That is um. I was gonna say like that's like a one year anniversary for like your significant other. But right? in a way, it was like a one year anniversary for like all of her significant others, which is uh all of the other system. people. Yeah. 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 Cause I guess, you know, blood is thicker than water or well, because you know, sister and so anyways, so blood yeah. of a covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. However, Oh, wait, what? That's the whole phrase. So, why is there water in the womb? Is there normally water in the womb? Are you serious? Hey, hey. You tell me what... 지난 주말에 친구들이랑 만나서... 어쩌, 어쩌, something else in Korean. Tell me what that means. Did you ever hear of... When someone's pregnant, their water breaks. Then water is no longer in the womb at that point, right? I don't know. Exactly. There's water in the womb that's holding the child. So blood of the covenant, which are the people that you meet, are friends. So the full phrase is blood of the covenant, which are your friends, is thicker than the water of the womb. So water of the womb is from mother to child. Like the bond that you make between someone you meet is stronger than someone that you're biologically forced with. Oh. That's what the whole phrase is supposed to mean. Oh. Isn't it funny how like people can manipulate things to I gotta use that correctly from now on. Yeah. Blood of the but isn't a covenant like a like religious a term? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. eh. that's also. Anyway, I, I went sidetrack. Sorry, I always do that. <laughs> no, but thank you for sharing the full statement of that. Yeah, blood of the covenant is thicker. Than... So, yeah, it doesn't have as much of a ring as blood is thicker than water. Yeah, and it's probably not true, right? Because oh, oh, no, 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 it is still true, right? The blood is still thicker. Mm hmm. Hey. Blood is literally thicker than water. Right. But is blood thicker than an umbilical cord? No. No, it's not. No. <laughs> okay, Dean is going to officially change the phrase to blood, it, the umbilical cord is thicker than blood. <laughs> right. Because that's true. <laughs> okay. But also, I I get that some people don't have good relationships with their family, and that's okay. It's mm -hmm. it's not necessarily like okay, but like it's okay, you know. Yeah, I get I get you. I I don't want you get me. That. Yeah. All right, but anyways, so let's maybe talk about like, can we talk about the day of or the night of? Okay what like can you even remember all that happened or is it like a blur or no i can remember exactly what happened all right so what happened from beginning to end the actual festival ball happened at 4 p.m but we had to report at 12 p 12 um, p.m mm -hmm. but before that of course <clears throat> when we report we have to have our hair and makeup done so that morning i woke up at 6 30 a.m to go to my, I was already at the hotel because we were staying at the hotel and that's where, at the Sheraton, that's where the festival ball happened. So I left the hotel at six, um, 6.30 to go to my hair appointment to get my hair done because our hair has to be in an updo. Then I got that done and went back to the hotel, got my makeup done, and then mentally prepared myself to report. Because <laughs> of course, we're, you're, you're through the whole process, we're super nervous and right. we're thinking, oh my gosh, today's the day. So when we got there, we had to um, 
at 12 o'clock, we went through and we had to vote for miscongeniality because oh. miscongeniality is determined based off of the peers. So we had to mm -hmm. vote for our miscongeniality, uh, which ended up being also Miss Popularity and the Queen. The Queen, right. I the heard about that. The first year to have a triple title. What is that? That was the first ever? First year in 69 years of the wow. whole festival running to have a triple title holder. Wow. She is so deserving. I love that's Brianne. Brianne is so deserving of that. Brianne, the queen, yeah, Miss Con Congeniality, Miss Popularity. Shout out to you. Yep, yep. Thank you for being awesome. Exactly. So after we voted for Miss Congeniality, then we got ready for our last minute rehearsal to run through the Taiko performance um, and the walkthrough of how what's going to happen that day. Then when it came to actual show time, the first thing that we do is our Taiko performance. And that's mm -hmm. when everyone first sees us on the stage. And everyone's, all of our parents, because of COVID, they couldn't be in the ballroom with us, but they mm -hmm. were watching from the rooms, which was mm -hmm. um, those televised school rooms. And the Taiko performance happened, and it was hosted by Kenny Endo. He's a really distinguished Taiko uh, performer okay. here in Hawaii and in Japan. Okay. And after the Taiko performance, we immediately had to go ch get changed into our evening gown dresses. That were sponsored and they were beautiful so um in our evening gown justice the first thing we had to do was our opening number so we did a dance a dance yeah we danced ha, 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 in the stars tonight like i wish kind of dance. <laughs> we danced to high hopes what so it was like a pop song yeah oh we danced to high hopes and um that's my girl by uh, fifth harmony. Okay. So I'm that not sure happened. That okay. And right after that, we went right into our Western phase, which is our evening gown phase. And in our evening gown, we had to do a, a nice walk as well as present our one minute speech. And the one minute oh. speech is a speech that we developed. Uh, we started in, I think, November. And we had to finalize it in December. And once we finalize it, we can't oh. change anything about it. Wow. And one of the speech, we have to recite it word for word from what we wrote. So wow. our um, our one-minute speech is just about, you can talk about anything. So I talked about something I'm passionate about, which is um, inspiring students to keep going and having hope and believing that they can do something that they, they, they that they should believe in themselves and should not okay. lose hope. So that was my speech. You you do a walk, you do a turn, you pivot, you pose, and then you um, present your one minute speech and then you walk off. Right after that, you go and get go backstage and you get dressed by Watabe Wedding in this ten to fifteen thousand dollar kimono. <laughs> Booty sode. Yes. Yeah, so after we put it on, we couldn't eat, we couldn't drink, we couldn't pee, can't do anything. <laughs> it takes twenty five minutes to get it on. Oh, yeah, I heard kimonos are like, it's a journey to just mm -hmm. put on. Exactly. Wow. But it was beautiful. I was the only one that had a purple sparkly kimono. Icon like, was telling me about that too. Yeah. About Pro Charger City. Pride. And it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it was literally a purple kimono with a silver obi. So it was literally Chargers. <laughs> Pro or City BTS. Pride is not leading the cheerleader. <laughs> bts2 i purple you right yes exactly wow okay yeah and so then... and the kimono we then um go on stage we do a kimono showing in which we show we walk really slowly in our sakita which is our kimono shoes then we present the kimono a specific way to show off the furi sode sleeves mm. and then we we do we present it from the back because the, there's designs on the back as well uh -huh. and then we Show it off and we walk to the mic and then we are given an impromptu question that we picked out in the beginning so we didn't mm. actually we don't know the question we, they just had it in an envelope and we randomly picked an envelope so um and it, it could be about anything current events it could be about your life could be about cherry blossom so mine was about um what is something that you're passionate about wow. and i talked about educating the youth uh -huh. and i elaborated on that and then after that, after everyone's done, then they go through a whole, the whole telling up of everything. And we're all waiting in the back in our kimonos. Uh, 
sweating in $10,000. Oh my gosh. Exactly. <laughs> That's like dripping down your legs, just waiting for your name to be called. And then just they call kidding. out. No, no, I'm not kidding. Oh, okay, okay. Moving on. I don't know. <laughs> and then um, they call Miss Congeniality, then Miss Popularity, then the three princesses, first princess, and then the queen. And then we, oh, uh, well, before that, of course, we have our final showing and we were presented flowers, all the girls, no matter what, mm. were all shown. Then, then we call, they call up all the titles and then they bring back everyone onto the stage to congratulate everyone for a successful Cherry Blossom Festival Ball. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the court takes like a bunch of pictures. And that was the end. They kind of like rushed us out because they got to, they rent those kimonos by the hour because you know wow. it's so expensive so they gotta get us out of those kimonos and then we got to take pictures with like four people from our family and that ended the night wow Ooh, it was an experience a good it was a great experience sure sounds like it cool that's yeah i mean i again right my cousin ran I never really followed it. I was just like, oh, okay, you know, that's cool. Good for her. But hearing, I guess, I never really talked to, to her about it, you know, but hearing mm -hmm. it from you now, like kind of step by step or like, you know, this event happened, then this and this and this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely sounds like I, I think that alone is reason enough for people to, you know, try, try out for this you know this uh festival yeah, yeah it's so much fun and the thing that i took away the most from it were the everlasting friendships that i made with the girls like mm. i can call them uh, like some of them my best friends now and it, it sounds cheesy but then it's probably really true you know i, I can see that that i can imagine um mm -hmm. there's a phrase in Korean, I guess bringing it back to Korean a little, just for a split mm -hmm. second. Um, I mentioned about like the four Chinese character um, meanings, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, so the one that I mention to my kids kind of often is Dongo Dongnak. And I might have mentioned it to you, I don't remember. But it's like, you suffer together, you enjoy together. Kind of like saying, right? Like the people that you go through hardships with end up mm -hmm. becoming like your closest friends not saying mm -hmm. that the journey was a hardship in a bad way but like mm -hmm. all of that is still hardships right it's things that you had to learn like learning is a hardship right yeah. so yeah i mean i can i can totally see how they end up being like your best friends so yeah that's that's amazing and exactly. yeah so i guess um regardless of what you learn culturally or professionally i think for closing what is one thing you learned about yourself through this journey like right you took this journey saying you know you want to learn more you want to experience the, like the cultural side of things mm -hmm. hearing how you're talking about this you had to have learn about yourself as well or have grown Definitely. you know what is the one thing hmm i guess i learned that oh i learned many things like one of the things is like true happiness because a lot of the time i would find happiness in other people and it wasn't until this one class where this guy was super the instructor was really really blunt and he asked me a question so where do you find happiness and i said i find happiness in other people and being happy and like doing all that and he was like okay you can't say that though because that's not what they want to look for you have to be able to as if they're looking for a queen they want to know that you are you you can be happy on your own and people can rely on you for happiness and i was like as much as that hurt my feelings, it was true. And I I found that I can make myself happy and I am the determiner of my own happiness. 
Wow. But not only that. Yeah, right? Right? Deep. 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 Gotta have the clap sound effect. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And then okay. the, I guess the other thing that I learned was just, uh, I guess, how much I still can grow. Like, even though I'm establishing myself in my, hopefully my full-time job, full-time, long-time career, and I've, I'm not taking any more schooling, I'm not doing anything that, like, necessarily is usually what you see as growth, like going through college and stuff like that. But there, throughout this process, I realize there's still so much I can grow, whether it be through maturity, intelligence, um presence there's so much that i can i i still can grow from and which is which is great because i don't want to stop and be i don't, don't want to be satisfied with who i am right now i want to be better so i learned that from this experience because you saw how much you can grow yes because i saw how much i grew from the beginning mm -hmm. nine months ago till now wow Right? Deep. 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 Maybe deep. Deep, Dean. Deep. Cool. This one is definitely um well, post this video and then that way try to get more people to watch it because <laughs> I think this is one of those like like I always tell my kids this, right? Like, yeah, you learn Korean, great. You learn photography, great. But like after my time with you, are you a better person? Yeah. You know? <gasps> Deep. Dean. Deep. <laughs> no, but Dean. really. Yeah. Oh yeah, my I'm... goodness. Okay. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was gonna say. I was gonna say you. <laughs> I was gonna say that is exactly what my mentor, who I look up to the most, that is exactly how he teaches. And for you to say that, I just like, my respect for you just went like, phew. Oh, thank you. But for you, it's for you to learn Korean. So um, step it up. <laughs> trying. I'm trying. Uh-huh. You're trying. I was okay, quiz today. it. I didn't try that hard. Oh, uh, yeah. Try harder. No, no, no. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, but really, like, I think today's talk, there wasn't really any Korean in it. But I think this is the kind of stuff that it's inspiring, you know, like, and I think that's why people like podcasts are so popular nowadays, mm -hmm. because I think we're all like really, we all have an addiction to hearing other people's thoughts and like, you know, like, I don't know, I can't speak for everyone, but the way that I see it or the way that I feel about things is like like lately and we've had these talks right with like everyone after working out like these super long talks like these talks are like addicting to me because it lets me hear like other people's opinions on things mm -hmm. which helps me form my thoughts on things better mm -hmm. yeah. um but yeah so i think that i'm not alone in that and i think that like tonight's conversation kind of hopefully you know if other people listen to it mm -hmm. it'll kind of like not necessarily inspire them like oh my gosh taylor is so amazing and then so i want to also do that but just get them thinking you know of things like hey you know like what she said about like you know what she learned professionally yeah about like how it's always about like trying your best and um you know, things can be bought, but then you see, like, okay, people, hopefully, if someone watches this, they recognize, like, oh, Taylor received gifts that didn't cost money necessarily, but they were so much more meaningful because of the effort that was put into them. <laughs> or, um, you know, like, uh, how you mentioned that growth is something that you can look at from a material standpoint like you know you can measure materialistically like college masters doctorates whatever but it's more than that right like you said it's just like 
there's there's different ways to grow and yeah you know so like and and you experience you recognize that through growing yeah mm -hmm. taking a step back reflecting on the journey and so you know i think that hopefully if people listen to this then it's kind of like a inspiring and more of a mutual way i don't know is that that's not the right word i know it's not but yeah uh roundabout oh, what is the word in korean it's kanjokjoguro like not like a direct way but like a like a side well, effect it's like a side effect what is the word <laughs> so it's like you got more than what you expected kind of thing kind of right like like the, the how do i explain this right like you you can listen to a lecture mm -hmm. about how to be a better person or something mm -hmm. and that's a direct way of being inspired yeah or you can watch a movie about someone who is a great person Mm -hmm. and then be inspired that way yeah mm -hmm. and so it's not like a direct way it's a indirect way is that the word i, was I looking for? guess so <laughs> oh my gosh english it wasn't intended to to get people to do something better right it's just they've they they felt the need and the want to do better yeah right. but it wasn't intended to right. get that message them doesn't that hit harder sometimes you're like yes yeah definitely wow okay well i really enjoyed this talk tonight thank you for oh, you sharing your journey thank you for asking wednesday we'll be right back on the korean yes got a lot, of a lot more here. attentive about it okay but um and again, that's not to say that, you know, you weren't putting in the effort prior to this. Understandably, you had a lot of things on your plate. Oh, yeah. All those but, commitments for all those classes. Right. But now, you don't. Right? Am I wrong on this? Well, we'll see. Now that I'm on court, there are oh. that I have to tend to. Shucks, as a why, did, why did she have to win anything? Just, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, actually, now the real work starts, yeah? Now the real business is happening. Well, I have a friend that teaches, or he majored in teaching Japanese. So if you want to take a step away from Korean and work on that, then can try to reach out to him. Oh, wow. Or I can teach you, like, like the first two weeks of Japanese. And then, <laughs> like, the first two weeks of a Japanese class. We can. Ah, uh, uh, Okay, that's about all I know. I'm just showing off a little bit at this point. No, <laughs> but yeah, Wednesday. Uh, um, so I guess moving forward though, uh, if we'll still keep the Monday Wednesdays, mm -hmm. but also. Totally understandable if you got other stuff you got to do. Yeah. And then just. But I'll let you know. Yeah. Just let me know. And then we're good. Yeah. But yeah. We'll get back to our normally scheduled, or regularly scheduled Korean lessons Wednesday. Yes. yes. See you then. Okay. Thank you for staying and listening. Thank you for if watching. You're still here. Uh, I appreciate you. Yeah. She appreciates you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. You have to hit him with a with a cherry 69th cherry blossom princess bow. Oh. Not standing up. Not standing. Well, you don't need to stand up, but okay, you can stand. Uh -oh. up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. See you all later. Bye.